Welcome back to the Elsewhere podcast. And today I'm joined by a guest who is somebody you might recognize, but you may never have heard from. It's Antonio Fidesz. Hello. How are you doing? I'm very, very well. How are you? Good. And I'm really glad you're here because Mm. usually we do like kind of like expert led chats and health experts and, you know, quite educational pieces. But when I met you at Cartmel Races, weirdly enough, I was like, oh my God, I know that guy. Um, Yeah. So I'll get into like your career, how everyone would know you. I came across you. uh, I think the algorithm must have just like fed me some of your stuff. Mm. Um, But basically you are a TikTok star. Is Mm. that right? Was that what you called yourself? Yeah, they're all calling me a TikToker at the moment, aren't they? Yeah. So I think we'll we'll, we'll go with that one. Okay. But uh, I mean, you came across, I came across you on Instagram because you'd done a bit of a skit on Baby Reindeer and that obviously must have got fed to me on my algorithm, thought it was very funny. And after yes. that, I followed you. Yeah. And then I met you at Cartmel. I was like, oh my God, there's that guy. I know, I know. It's um, nice that we are finally doing this. Um, I think TikToker is the right word. I mean, I'd have to be honest, I hate the word influencer. Right. I'm not a fan of when people call me an influencer. I don't know why. I feel like there's a little bit of like... Um, I don't know. I don't, maybe sometimes I don't feel influential, but like, I like being called a content creator or a digital creator. Yeah. Well, that's, that's a good description. Yeah. So Antonio, tell me how on earth you got into this. You're somebody who's got 750,000 on TikTok. You've Mm -hmm. got like 120,000 on your Instagram. How on earth did this all begin? Um, Kind of by accident, really. I think, you know, I always say to everybody, I think that lockdown really changed social media and it, and it has done permanently in the sense that you know more people were, were on it than ever because everybody was isolating and this new wave of content came in so everybody started doing these tiktok videos and before tiktok used to be dance primarily dancing mm-hmm. videos but then it all just became like one minute comedy clips and over the course of lockdown i kept looking at this and i just thought I, I definitely think that I could I could do something like that. And I always knew that I was funny and everyone always told me I was. But sometimes, you know, when you you're talented, you you're talented at something, but you don't know how to execute it. So you're yeah. like, I'm good at this, but I don't I don't know how I can like make something out of it. And mm. that felt like the answer at the time. So then I was like, okay, I'm gonna start doing a few of these comedy clips. But it was never like it was never overnight. Like I wasn't that guy that just like put a video out, got a million and then all of a sudden he was on his way. Mm. Um, it was like really staggered. It was kind of like 1,000, 2,000, And then it, and then after a quarter, like, then it started getting to like 20,000. And then I was like, oh, there might be something in this. Yeah. And when was that? 2021? That started initially in 2021, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So we're 2024 now. So three years you've been doing it. Yeah, yeah. And this is the I thing. I put a shift in. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. This is the thing. It's like consistency. And yeah. you've been consistent for three years now. Yeah. And it's probably only now you're seeing it like really take off. Now I'm kind of witnessing a yeah. lot of the benefits. Okay. Well, that's good because you've, <laughs> you've put in a shift, as yeah. you say. So, um What are some of the benefits a TikTok stroke content creator can enjoy? I mean, I think, you know, obviously it's, there's a great creativity program that that content creators can enroll on and they they can earn off that. So that's a really good opportunity. I think as you build your profile, you also get lots of attention off brands. So you get to work with a lot of brands as well. Um, And and also the social aspects of it, Mm. like meeting people like yourself. Yeah. That that's happened. That's happened because obviously you recognised me mm-hmm. off the platform, and then obviously we've now formed a connection. So you get to do things like this. Yeah, that's also really nice. Exactly. And what were you doing before that? I <laughs> I've done a few things. So I was working in retail. I was actually working in Selfridges. Oh right, nice. the department store. Yeah, yeah. and I, I left then. I left there, and I actually went to go and work for a uh, broadband uh, provider in an office in Media City. Right. And then I recently left that a few months ago because obviously all of this was doing really well. So now I get to just be free. I mean, well, that's a big leap. I mean, for anybody who's listening to this, who's thinking about, I don't know, trying to monetize their platform or trying to make uh, a name for themselves, being a content creator, whatever niche that may be, that must be a fantastic day when you can actually turn around and go, I actually can give up my nine to five because I can do this. I can stand on my own two feet doing this now. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's a scary thing to do. And and I still, I still, 
I'm nervous about it now because it's so fresh. I feel like I'm learning to adapt to my to being self-employed basically where you know I think being self-employed is so different in the sense that I kind of wake up every morning and I'm like there's not that feeling of being like oh I'm I'm late yeah can you swear that, on here yeah of course you can you know shit I'm yeah. late you know uh, and all that kind of stuff and where's my keys and where's this and my, you know manager's gonna kill me mm. you know all of that's gone which is quite comforting but then at the same time you're like Oh, like nobody wants me anywhere today. <laughs> I know what you mean, but well, it's being self-employed is no easy feat either. So tell Absolutely me, not. Yeah. What does a typical day look like? Do you like structure your day like <laughs> mm, ten, nine till twelve? I'm gonna like write some comedy sketches or mm. I'm gonna do come up with ideas or No. Is it just like no, it's oh, really on the fly? terrible? We're talking like waking up in two two o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> Where am I? What's going on? Um, so if I've got something arranged that's in the diary, yeah. that's different. Like, you know, uh, there's all sorts of things going on at the moment, whether mm. it kind of be, you know, radio stations or podcasting or I've got a filming commitment. Like if things like that are happening, then, you know, I've kind of become really, I've become really good at writing in a calendar at the moment, okay. which I was terrible at. Mm. But I do that now. But if nothing's going on, um, I don't know. I, I'm probably wake up any time of the day, and it just can be really <laughs> terrible and disorganised. No, I know, I know what you mean. It, I think I'll get better. Do you, so when you do film your content, do you batch it together? Do you have like a day of filming, and then you know where you might film like four or five videos? No, I know a lot of content creators do work right. like that. And as time goes on, I always think it'd probably be within my benefit if I worked mm. like that. Um, but I don't. I'm just. I'm a go as I'm a go, go as I go along. Right. Yeah. So like, I'm just because I'm very. I've always got so many ideas for a video. My brain's always in that a thousand places, and I just feel like if I've got too many ideas on the go, I'm not going to be able to like focus on the cut, like the the idea that I've got. Mm. So I have to just do one by one. And that's just how it always works. If you get an idea for a video, do you write it down immediately? Yeah, straight away. Yeah. Straight away. I'll li I literally, I'll be like on the street, I'll see a woman uh, screaming <laughs> or I'll see a man having an argument at a bus station. I'll be like, it's straight in my iPhone notes, man argued at bus station. Da, da, da. Yeah. Because that is that is literally how you get the, your main source of inspiration yeah. by looking at, w at what's out there. So yeah, I do do that quite a lot. I mean, we should say if people haven't watched any of your stuff, what is some? What is your style? What's the main stuff that you like to film? Uh, well, it's comedy. Yeah. So it's all comedy skits. Um, I think the main thing that obviously I do is like mum comedy skits. So, you know, really. Which is unusual because how old are you, Antonio? 24. You're a 24 year old young man. Yes. And you are dressing up like your mother. Yeah. And pretending to be her. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. You know, in a dress, lipstick, I doing am. your hair. Yeah. You know, how did that come about? Well, the development of the character, because yeah. if you've seen some of the early ones, she was never dressed up. Right. So it's just the exagger it's just getting more and more exaggerated. Okay. So I think that I've done obviously I've done loads of different types of comedy skits. So it's not just been mum videos. I've done impression videos. Like I've done Judge Rinder, Jeremy Kyle, Loose Women. The panel even put that on the show and live reacted to that. Oh really? One. Yeah, oh, yeah. Because wow. um I did an impression of them. Um but that must have been a nice pinch me moment. It, do you know who it was? They never told me they were going to put it on either. Really? No. I was like, I was literally working in the, in the office and a friend rang me like hysterically like while I was on my break and she was like, you're on the TV, you're on the TV. And I was like, me? And I, she was like, yeah, yeah, you. And I went, for what? Like, you know, what yeah. have I done? And Because I couldn't think. Yeah. And then, yeah, I put the TV on and Loose Women were just reacting to my uh, skit on the panel. Who did you do? I did. Janet Street Porter. Yeah. <laughs> she wasn't happy about it. Oh, really? She was not loving it, no. I, th I, d I think maybe she wasn't loving it because it was quite accurate. Oh, really? I think so. Um, I did... Who else did I do? I did Denise. I did... Ruth. Right. And I think one other but I can't remember but um I think, yeah, the people that were on the panel that day I think were Frankie, Ruth... Uh, Janet Street Porter and I can't remember who else. Oh God! Yeah, yeah, but no, it was. It was a nice surprise. It was, it was funny. Um, but things like that are pinch me moments because yeah. you know, 
you you find yourself going and going and going and going. And at, at one point, you know, when it wasn't a monetized thing mm. and I wasn't really making a living off it, you you do, you have those moments where you're like, what am I doing? Like, what? Well, that's the thing. I mean, the, how, how do you film it? Do you have a team of people who help you film it and edit it? Or is it just all one man band? Totally unprofessional. Like, yeah. <laughs> so it's all like, you. It's all just me. Like, um, yeah, sometimes, do you know, sometimes I'll, it's quite wild, but I've got quite a big following on Facebook, like 100,000. And some, sometimes I'll put a status up. I'll say, mm. anyone want to come film now? Right. And then they'll all be like, me, 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 me. And um, Do you not worry about these people like being complete psychos? or Never like, crosses my mind. Really? No. <laughs> so like literally sometimes I'll phone my business partner and I'm like, yeah, so I'm on my way to Worsley. And she's like, why? And I'm like, yeah, well, I'm just going to this lady's house to film. And she's like, who? And I, I, I don't know. Just met her on Facebook five minutes ago. She gave me a dress, said I can come round. Oh my God. Yeah, and I'll imagine. just go. Never ended bad. Okay, good. It's all right. I think I'll, <laughs> don't worry. We've got some nice people there who are just buzzing to me. Ho hopefully. Yeah. I think, I've, um, yeah, but I do that quite a lot. It's a habit I haven't broke out of. Right. Because the thing is, obviously, after, for me, this is new. Mm. So I don't have a, t a team of people. I, I, you know, I'm not kind of at that level. So, the people that I either used to film for myself or my mates would just, just help me. Just using like a tripod and a ring light and... Oh, no, even worse. Some, sometimes it'd be like a, pile, a of, pile of books <laughs> and then a mouthwash. <laughs> lean the phone <laughs> lean the phone on that. <laughs> Hope for the best. Yeah. Falls off. Have yeah. a bit of a tantrum, yeah. put it back on again, try again. Oh God. Yeah. Yeah, so really kind of like grassroots stuff then. But I mean, again, so to go back to now, Sorry, yeah. it, you've given up your job mm. to do this full time. Yeah. So it must be going well. And how yeah. does a TikToker make money on these platforms? Well, you can make it from the, so you get, you can be enrolled onto something that's called the, I think it's called the creativity program. They might have changed it, but I think that's what it was called. So you can be earned based on you. You can earn money on your view revenue. You can also earn it from brands. Mm -hmm. um, that would probably be the two main sources of income from TikTok. Obviously, you can earn it for going live. Oh, really? Yeah, I I wouldn't go live though. Right. That's not really for me. No. No. But I suppose if I don't know, you're a retailer. You know, you're selling cosmetics or whatever. Going live for them is is like. Great. Yeah, though it's perfect. Yeah. I mean, you see so many. I mean, if you made by Mitchell yeah, makes an I absolute mean, killing absolutely. on a live. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So But his his is absolutely perfect for that, the the cosmetics. Absolutely. Yeah. But no, I think it'd be very dangerous if I was on live. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? Yeah. It's um yeah, I would hate to do anything live. I would hate it. Yeah. It's like when I do this podcast, I look at podcast number one, I absolutely hated it, you know. And then you try and refine and get better over time, don't you? So, yeah, you do. Um, okay, so your main revenue is TikTok. So do you get paid for any Instagram or is that a different platform? For Instagram, no. no. Like, I don't I don't know if there's some button I'm not clicking. Mm. If that is the case, I'm going to be very upset. Yeah, I've, I know. Obviously, I've put quite a few things out. But um, no, Facebook though, yeah. They, they have quite a few bonus programs. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, signed really? up to the lot yeah <laughs> i yeah. mean youtube as well if you have you ever thought about doing longer videos more episodes of stuff we have literally been speaking about that yeah i mean i haven't cracked youtube yet though right i don't really know what's going on there long form content isn't it well even like you know because they've got youtube shorts mm. so you'd think that'd be an easy gateway mm. for me because you think i can just put everything from tiktok and instagram onto yeah. there but YouTube saying Antonio, sorry, not today. Really? Yeah, I don't, I don't know what's going on. They don't, like, don't get any views. Well, the, yeah, well, that's the thing. Yeah. It's like, um, I don't know. Maybe skits don't work well over there as they do on TikTok, but it's more like educational, long form content, conversation piece that mm. someone's pulled out a little clip from a conversation. Yeah. Maybe you taking saying this about YouTube right now could be a good YouTube short. Yeah. No, there's something. <laughs> For yeah. Us. Yeah. I think so. And maybe, yeah, maybe them understanding that they should really push me out more. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you, so you have different characters and you said that one stemmed from your mom and you got inspiration or mom type characters. Mm. You seem to do a lot of female characters mm. and this, 
seem to be quite aggressive. They're always quite strung out. I mean, I get it because I recognise a bit of my behaviour and or my mum's behaviour and the women that I know, some of our customers, I know act out like that. Do mm. you ever get a bit of backlash of it for any of the stuff that you say? Absolutely. I mean, there's been met, there's been a few fair few occasions where women have made uh, videos where they've stitched one of my videos and they yeah. do a reaction to it and they basically say that they think I'm, you know, really misogynistic, I'm making fun of women, I'm demeaning women. Um, and and I do find that really upsetting. I do, I've always said this, I've always said, I don't really care about online scrutiny in the sense of if you want to call me fat or you want to call me a bitch, mm. that's okay. Like I can handle things like that. But I really hate being misunderstood. Mm. That's where I get upset when somebody hasn't recognized my intention. Like if you, you know, if you, if people understand my intention and then they hate what I've done, I can, de I can deal with that better. Cause I'm like, well, at least you know where I came from. So if you hate it, well, I respect that because you've got the facts. But when somebody just doesn't get something that does upset me. And I think that the whole thing about women is that, you know, when I'm making these mum videos where there's maybe she's having a breakdown at the sink or she's screaming at the kids or she's lost it in the car, whatever it is, it's not, it's comedy to, to a certain extent, but it's also me saying that I acknowledge it. Mm. I, acknowledge, I acknowledge that that's how a woman can feel. And I think it's important that people know that, you know, it's not me saying I understand. I couldn't understand because obviously I'm not a mother and I'm not a woman. Mm. Um, but yeah, and I really do love the comfort that it brings to women who kind of see themselves in it and feel understood. Um, and that's, you know, I think that's, there's intentions similar across all the characters that I do. You know, there's, there is a, there's a reason, but there's a positive reason behind why I want to portray that character. So, yeah. Fair enough. Are you, have you ever had like a really bad episode of being trolled or anything like that? And if so, how do you deal with it? Um, Cause like putting your head above the parapet in which that you do and you are exposing yourself to so many, I mean, there's some absolute arseholes on the internet. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, do you yeah. ever, have you ever had like anything really bad? I won't say I've ever had anything like really bad, but I do think people can be quite critical in a way that maybe sometimes they don't see as damaging, but mm. can be, you know, for example, you know, there's been a lot of talk on my weight recently. Um, I think when I started TikTok in 2021, I was definitely like a little bit smaller than I am now. You know, I won't say now that I'm like a beast, but like I've, I've certainly put a noticeable amount of weight on mm. um, that they would be able to to realize so you know you do get people that sometimes like oh you know he's piled the pounds on or oh god you know he's just gained quite a belly or and yeah like sometimes I, sometimes um i do i do find that a little bit difficult because if if you realize that something like that is going on with yourself mm. and then you're trying to deal with it in your own way or maybe you're trying to forget about it and then people bring it up they're kind of validating these like negative ways that you feel about yourself. Cause it's like, you know, if I look at myself in, you know, in the mirror in the morning and I'm like, oh, I've put a bit of weight on. And then, like, then I read like a TikTok comment that's like, oh my God, this guy's put a bit of weight on. Mm. Then I'm like, shit, do you know what? I must have put a bit of weight on because I thought it this morning. This guy thinks it too. So yeah. But like I said, those, those types of things don't affect me too much. Like name calling is not really up on that radar of things that upsets me. Like it's more when people would say something like he's sexist, he's like promoting classism or yeah. like, they're, they're things that upset me more. Right. Okay. Yeah. I mean, again, it's observational humor and you could say that about every comedian like Peter Kay or anybody mm. who like, you know, does these kind of characters, you know what I mean? Mm. You know, he used to do a work in men's club on. So I, I completely get it. I think people should lighten up a little bit and just be, yeah. yeah. If you can't say anything nice, don't say it. It's like be observational, but not too observational. I've, yeah. I don't, you know, I think sometimes, because sometimes. And I people do, could just skip past it. Like, so what? Like, yeah. go, don't follow me, go away, whatever. Yeah, it is really strange like it, that some people really do stop to say what they think when it when it's well you've got to think what have you got going on in your life absolutely nothing yeah it is very strange behavior yeah um okay so what have you got 
planned? Have you got any new characters coming out? So you do like your main ones. Is it she called Janet? Yes. Okay. Janet's the, the main gal. Okay. On the scene. Yeah. And then how are you going to move it on? Um, I don't know. Okay. I, I'm not sure. I mean, people are loving Janet. Mm. There's, you know, it's... It was just supposed to be mum skits. That yeah. was how it all started. She wasn't called Janet. You know, like even when I was saying before, you know, and I, you know, the outfit kind of got more and more exaggerated. I think as people were falling in love with the videos, my greatest effort became building Janet. Right. You know, that was kind of what I've spent time building and getting people to fall in love with her phrases. Um you know, classic things that she does, whether it's her mannerisms, body language, whatever it might be. So I feel like she's, I've got her to a point where she's perfectly crafted now. Right. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm Maybe quite... you could develop her family characters. Yeah. No, I, I mean, that would be fantastic. Yeah. I mean, because every you always hear them in the background and stuff. So that could certainly be an area of development. I have got, I don't know if you've seen her, but I have got a character called Unique and, and that's spelled U. N double E K. <laughs> right, okay. No, I don't think I've seen that one. Yeah, she's like, you know, the one that's on the bus. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's yeah. like, where's my money? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go on, let us on. Right. That really typical kind of like. Like, like Mancunian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I loved, I love doing that. Right. Yeah, because I've got like a load of Mank friends. So I kind of do get like, I really like the accent and stuff. Yeah. How, uh, okay, so you, I was, was looking at your um, Instagram stories the other day and you'd done a bit of a collab with Tanya Bardsley. I did. That must have been nice. How did that come about? Well, I mean, we kind of just started connecting on Instagram a little bit here and there. Like, you know, she was liking a few of my things. I was liking a few of her things. And then we followed each other. And then shortly after, like, I had this, mo I had a moment where I, I knew I wanted to do a collaboration with somebody but I didn't quite know who. And she kept popping up quite frequently. And I thought, I feel like Tanya is a completely different person to Janet. Mm. And I think that there's nothing more hilarious than putting, two, you know, two women in a room um, that, that are probably quite different and would have disagreements. And I, I really liked the idea of that. So I just messaged her and I just asked her if she wanted to do one and she was really kind and she said, yeah. And she, you know, she invited me to her house. And oh, amazing. So you've got like a nice backdrop, nice setting. She's got a beautiful house. Yeah, she, Yeah, she does. And um, yeah, and we filmed two skits together and she was brilliant like she really like understood the assignment okay like she got it yeah she's she's really funny she's she's pro she's proper funny yeah she is and she's game for a laugh yeah. yeah yeah she was so ready for it and there were even there were even bits in it you know where she would improvise we had obviously i work off a script i always do so i can never just wing some it because I'm just not good like that. But um, there were times where we did like go off the scripts and like she'd say, oh, maybe you should say, get the mum saying something about me not having these matching cups. And that's in there. Yeah. And, you know, there's little little quirky things like that. And it was very humorous. She was brilliant. When uh, When's that getting released? I've only ever seen the behind the scenes by this podcast. By the time this podcast comes out, it probably will be released. Um, the, I believe... So I think the first one was the one I did with her about being in the club. Yeah. Yeah. And the, I think maybe the mum one might be already out. Oh, right. Okay. I think so. I'm You're making good. me question it now. No, I, don't, I literally, I didn't, I, I was looking at it the other day and I've not looked at it to, like today to see what you've put out. So mm. forgive me if it's already out there. I haven't seen it yet. Um, you'll like it. I think you'll find it funny. Okay. It's about, it's about like mums being competitive with each other. So it is very human. So she's kind of there like, oh, you know, my, my Rocco's just started playing for the under 15s in Chelsea. And, da, da. and Janet's kind of like, oh, you know, my son got offered something like that, but he turned it down. And then she's like, you know, she's like, oh, I didn't know your son played football. And I'm like, I'm like of course my son plays football. You know, that yeah. kind of like, I, I really find it f the, um, really funny when it, with th that subtle comedy of two women indirectly being nasty yeah. with each other. Um I th yeah, I think that's quite, it can be quite humorous. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I completely get it. She is a great character for you, definitely. I'm just trying to think who else. Who else would be on your dream list to collab with? Oh, um, that's a good question. I, I feel know. like Charlotte Dawson would be good. 
Charlotte Dawson would be good. She would be a laugh. Olivia Atwood would be good. Oh, she would be great. Yeah. Um, I think that's quite, Davina McCall would be good. She would be great. I yeah. just don't think a friggin' Channel 4 all let her do anything. Do you know what I think? No, or ITV. Who's she signed up with now? She does uh, She does uh, Mass Singer, doesn't she? Yeah, and another one. Is it it's it's something about family dating? Oh yeah. John. Oh yeah, ITV, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your yeah. mum, your dad. That's it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um maybe. Who knows? Who knows? I'm gonna have to start knocking on the doors and asking the questions. Well, exactly. And I think yeah. that's how you move it on. Do you know what I mean? You just start doing a few more interactive collabs with people I think yeah. that's probably a smart move for you because people enjoy the content and then it's just keeping it fresh isn't it with like new people new characters yeah definitely yeah I'm just trying to think he's Manchester based I don't know you've got all the Cory stars in Manchester yeah can you imagine like somebody like oh what's the woman called on Cory with the neck um what's she <laughs> called Gail Platt not Gail Platt the mum of Gail what's mom, Gail Platt's mum called Calvin. <laughs> Audrey. Audrey Roberts, you know, somebody oh, like that. Yeah, I forgot. They're like the ultimate mums. Who's the who's the other old person in it? Probably shouldn't be saying old person. <laughs> mature person. Um, well, Gail Platt is a good one. She's she's great. Like Oh, Deidre. Yeah, isn't didn't she say so? Isn't there a funny like meme? It was not a meme, it actually happened where she throws the jelly at the wall. Yeah, something like do, that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. She's, like, she's like, it's not supposed to do this, it's supposed to wobble and then she yeah. chucks it. Yeah, like, or something like that. I but don't I remember, remember. Gail, Platt, Gail Platt's had some really like comical scenes, but you'd have to do it as Gail Platt. Yeah. Not... I'm not on drugs, that yeah, one. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, you'd have to see if they've got yeah. any work at the moment or if they haven't. <laughs> okay, so you mentioned that brands now approach you. Yeah. I mean, that must be again, like, what the fuck? You know, like it's, when things happen, you're like, oh my God, such a brand wants to work with me. It's very nice. It's very, it's a very nice feeling. Um, Can you mention any brands that you've worked with? Well... I would imagine if they're posted somewhere, you could mention them. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, one that I've worked with a couple of times that I really, and, and I genuinely love it, is Air Up. Have What's you, Air Up? Do you know these water oh, bottles? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's changed my life. Really? It absolutely has. Like, I just love them. They're just basically... The, so these... it's like flavoured air. That is, it puts a flavour in the top that, of the bottle, that's doesn't right. it? So you so drink you... water and it tastes flavoured. That's right. So you kind of, you fill it, you fill the bottle with water and then you get these scented like pods mm. and then you, you put it on the top. But they do like loads of cool ones like, um, uh, like cherry cola and peach and um, I love them. How, like, how genu- do you make content incorporating like the brand? Do you do it in character or do you do it as you doing a bit of a shout out, explaining the product? Um, I think it's very dependent on what they want. What they want. Yeah, so yeah. I'll just kind of get in touch with them and ask. A lot of them do like to send her a lot of the stuff around the mum. Right. So then it can be like, how can I involve mum with the water bottle? And we've done a couple of them and they, you know, they were well executed and the brand really enjoyed them. So, um, and I really like that. I, I really like like developing a relationship with brands rather than just kind of, working with loads of different ones in a cluster you know it's really nice to kind of yeah get to get to know get to know a brand and work with them I would agree somebody who sits at brand side I can tell you what I want Mm. what I'm expecting because I think the let's say the influencer stroke content creator and this is one of the reasons we don't we don't pay anybody to do anything for us is because I'm like so against it Mm. um because one, I think then you think, oh, well, you can buy their opinion, which obviously means a lot to us. We we don't want people to do that. But also I think what sometimes they don't understand, um, let's say I, I was a fashion brand and I paid, I don't know, some reality star like five grand to, you know, promote your dress or whatever it is, loads of clothes. And if they do like a half assed job because they're not really bothered about the brand, like the, the brand's got to make at least minimum five grand back to break even mm. on that post. So, But realistically, they're looking for a return on their investment. So they want to be making around 10 to 15, mm. realistically. Or if they're making 10, you've doubled your money. That Well, you know, you've got at least five grand back minus your VAT, minus what's cost you to give out the clothes, minus all your overheads and everything. So you're coming out with a little bit of profit. But that is what celebrities, influencers, they don't understand the business side. Mm. If you are a celebrity, influencer or content creator, 
this will give you the edge, by the way, if you say these things. If you say to them, like a brand, and you said to them, uh, yeah, I want to work with you, blah, blah, blah. Just say, what is it you're looking for? Are you looking for brand awareness? Are you looking for conversions? Or what, what is it? What's the, what are we trying to achieve with me doing these things? Mm. And then say, okay, what is your break even? What is this? What is that? Because then I'll know if it's successful. And then if you know that, you know how far you can push it, what you should be saying, mm. et cetera. And that would make me feel comfortable. I would want to work with that person again because I'd be like, they understand business. Mm. And I think that also shows that you care. Of course. You care who you're working yeah. with. I mean, yeah, you'll get loads of influencers that are just kind of like, I'm just going to take, take the fee, money, do yeah. the ad. Done, and, 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 just, and just be done with it. But, yeah. you know, like I said, I, I really do think that working relationships are very important. Absolutely. And I want I want people to continue to work with me. Yeah. And the only way you can do that is if you ask the questions that you've, based, yeah, that you've said, that exactly. to show an interest, not only just being like, I'm, get, I'm getting paid, yeah. oh, I'm getting paid for an ad, but also being like, I care about what you're going to receive from that ad. Correct. There's been, I'll tell you this, there's been so many times where I've had like small businesses that have maybe approached me and want to want want to do an ad mm. and you know it's for a decent amount of money and I genuinely feel tight taking that because money you know because that for I them that is like could be huge to them sometimes just because you have a huge following doesn't mean that your followers are going to care about everything yeah. that you do you know and I've and I've learned that in my own personal way mm. you know I've made some mistakes or maybe post posted things that my followers maybe don't appreciate because they the sole purpose they follow me for is comedy yeah um but you know it's so when brands get in touch and and what what you know they get in touch with a certain thing you know i have to say to myself how is my audience going to respond to that you know is it going to fare well for me and is it mm. going to fare well for the brand and yeah sometimes if if it's a small business and you know that they're probably spending the majority of their ad advertising budget on you. Yeah. And you kind of know in your head yeah. that, that people are not really going to care about... Or they're not... Or you look at the product and you think, no one's really going to buy that. Yeah, I think morally, yeah. it's a nasty thing to accept that job. Yeah. Because... so. You, it, it would hurt you. You wouldn't really care too much if, if it was if it was a big corporate company that had absolutely yeah, millions. Yeah, and they've got, got to spend it. Yeah, yeah, I've got, got, yeah budget, fucking so give me spend. four slices of yeah, the cake. Yeah, yeah. but um, otherwise, I agree. Yeah, totally. it's not fair, man. Yeah, it that, isn't fair. Yeah. yeah, and you know, you you know, you wanna you wanna treat others how you know you wanna treat others how you would like to be treated, and I think that it's it's good to have that principle early on because uh, absolutely. If, because you know it can definitely bite you back. Well, exactly. And that's the thing. If it doesn't fit or doesn't align with your brand value and people think because you've got a big following. So this is classic from small businesses as well that I see. They go, oh, well, that person's got 60,000 followers. I'm like, how many people are watching their stories? Mm. Could be like less than 1%. Could mm -hmm. be like a thousand people, which is, and then of that many people who is potentially going to buy, let's say 1% potentially might buy of that thousand people. Mm. Um, that's a really small number because you think, oh, well, it's going out to 60,000 people. No, because we know the algorithm doesn't show it to 60,000 people. I know. Do you know there's so many times where I actually see content creators getting work and they've got like dog shit engagement mm. and I just think, what is that brand doing? Yeah. Like, what What are you doing? Why have you wasted your money on I that? Know. And, you know, I do feel like, you know, my experience of kind of going through the process of working with brands, I, you know, I think a lot of them are quite switched on now in the sense that, they do want analytics before they work with you. Yeah, you know, I think that's important. That, because the to, thing is, you if to. you are massive in Germany and you do not send your products to Germany or whatever, mm. what's the point in using that person? You might as well use someone who's like following is huge in Britain. <laughs> yeah, you no, know, pretty much. And also, like you, like you said, I mean, there's so many things that you can't tell unless you request for it, like mm. story views. Yeah, you don't know. Somebody, somebody could just be, be, you know, just being cunning with you in the sense that you won't, you won't know because that's not something you can see. Yeah. Um. So it is important for a brand to obviously have a look at all of that so yeah. that they get the full picture. I mean, me personally, I literally never endorse a thing. I cannot be bothered. I don't even. I get off of free products constantly, and I just say honestly, nothing. I think it's great. I'd rather just buy it than I'm not under any pressure to do anything because I'm shit at making content. Mm. And somebody sent me some the two young lads actually, and I was moving house at the time, and they insisted on sending me some cleaning products, and I was like, guys, I don't know when I'm going to get this done. Today, I've still not done it. It must be six 
seven months later. <laughs> no. And, uh, and I feel like I should give them a real big shout out. They're called Home Things, by the way. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, but again, they went, listen, no pressure. If you want to do it, do it. And if you don't, don't worry. I was like, oh, Well, guys. that's what they all do, innit? Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to say the brand because I think their drinks are dog shit. Right. They're really fucking bad. And if anybody wants, if anybody guesses them, then that's. That's great. But this brand, I'm going to end up saying it by accident. Yeah, but this, this, We can bleep it out if you say it. You can say it okay. to tell me and then uh, we'll bleep it out. Can't uh, bleep it out. Yeah, but make sure you definitely bleep <laughs> yeah. it out. But it's called... Yeah. Fuck me. Like they, they were sending me... I'm not joking you, it was har- harassment. Yeah. They, they were sending me every weekend like two big boxes by Yodel yeah. of drinks a week. And every, and every week the buzzer would go and I'd go, oh! I don't, what have yeah. I ordered this? I don't remember ordering anything this week. And then I run downstairs and I'd see these fucking yodel boxes and I yeah. think, bloody brilliant. Yeah. And, it'd be, and it'd be that brand. Anyway, I'd take them up to, and every weekend it was a different flavour. And I thought, well, first off, there's, there's so many, I think I was getting delivered about 40 to 50 a time. Yeah. Right. Every weekend. So I was like, I don't know how they're even expecting me to keep this in the fridge. Yeah. Like, how many do they think I'm having? Like, one per second. Imagine how much it must like cost to make that shite and if they can send that because <laughs> have imagine, you tried it you, uh, yeah putrid it tastes like shit they are so rank I know the kids well, love them <laughs> and then so... you got people selling them for 20 quid a bottle <laughs> yeah and then even like just because I'm just such a nice person well I think I am mm. <laughs> um, they messaged me like even after they sent me all these boxes you think I'd just message back and say yeah. sorry this is not for me and then I think they said something like oh what do you prefer this time Antonio like hydration or fizz and I was like Oh, like maybe hydration. Yeah. And then I was like, why have I done this to myself Hello. again? They're back at the door. Anyway, I ended up giving them all away to, um, I live in an apartment block and there's a lady that lives at the bottom who I'm uh, good friends with. And I kind of, what I do all the, every time they come through the door, I don't even bother going up the stairs. I literally <laughs> just walk to her door I go and I say, Annie, the <laughs> drinks are here. Go on, have a taste. Because obviously if she likes them, she can have them. Otherwise, what I do with them is really bad. Um, I get a cardboard box. I put it. I put it on the pavement uh, on the street of yeah. my house, and I put. And I just. Put, I just put free. Ta- you know, take as many as you please. That is like, I, if I was like Coca Cola <laughs> or another brand, I would love to take a picture of that and be like, "Well, that's." In fact, haven't Coca Cola bought them? Oh, no, now imagine. we're giving away who it is. But um, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure they've sold that business. I mean, listen, that business fucking. I can't take anything away from them. What a masterclass in marketing that is. I know. Well, do like, you know what? Masterclass. Class. I mean, I remember for the longest time that was like, I don't want to like center mm. this podcast around this drink, but like, I remember that everyone was on about that. Do you yeah. remember it was a big craze to try one? Until and, you actually tried it. Until it you like, try like, it. And well, that's it. You know, if it doesn't stack up, then it's going to be a hit and miss. And it'd be like, God, do you remember years ago and everyone was after that <laughs> just horrible drink? Do you know <laughs> what I mean? But the bubble will burst, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, absolutely nuts. Um, okay. Can I tell you another story um, actually about, this is totally irrelevant, but just while we're on yeah. ha- home deliveries, I really feel like I've got to share this. So, so everyone's been penalising me because I don't have a microwave. Okay. And everyone's like, how do you not have a microwave? And I'm like, because, well, first I'm never in, I don't cook nothing because I'm just, I'm always out for food. It, it's a problem, I know. Um, anyway. Uh, so I thought, go on, I'll order this microwave and try and make some use of it because everybody's got one. So I went on this Asda, found this microwave, Russell Hobbs. All right, I'll have that. And then uh, <laughs> I had a matching kettle. I thought, go on, I'll get that as well. And then, do you know when you like, you do the checkout and then it starts suggesting stuff? Um, then started like, suggesting snacks and things and thought, right. And then it said, uh, pack of Harry bows. I thought, well, oh, they're, they're funny pack. I never tried them. Added them to the basket. Check out whatever. It's getting delivered the next morning. Mm. And then I go to bed and then I'm a bit of an insomniac me. So I always wake up in like the middle of the night. And I got a text at like three o'clock in the morning saying that the microwave and the kettle were out of stock. So oh, they weren't right. coming to deliver them. It's all right. So I went to sleep. And then about eight o'clock in the morning, I heard the buzzer. Oh, What's going on? Because they texted me in the middle of the night and said they can't bring the the microwave and the kettle. And I opened the door and there's this delivery man stood outside with a packet of Harry Bows. Is that it? Yeah, just a packet. Oh my God. I was fucking mortified. I was well embarrassed. I thought, (laughs) I hope to God this guy 
realizing. Yeah, that, that everything I, that else I, on the list. That I ordered a microwave <laughs> and a kettle because the fact that a huge delivery van's parked outside my house for a one pound fifteen packet of sweets is really fucking embarrassing. I know. Imagine yeah. you paid more just, for the for the slots. I couldn't even the... explain myself. I just no. had to take. I just took the bag. But thank you, mate. Oh, God. <laughs> you know, I was like, Dad, your sweets are here. Oh no. no, it's very terrible. Oh God. Yeah. So, um, is there any uh, any other brands that you've loved working with? Um, yeah. Or you've thought, wow, um, ha- Hasbro. Who's Hasbro? They do. They like make Twister, Jenga, oh, yeah, like, yeah. all the board games. Yeah. So, I done I, I done an adv- uh, advertisement for Jenga a few months ago. That was really fun. I'm good. I love doing that one. Yeah. Um, so yeah, but there's been there's been a fair few. Um, there's definitely brands that I want to work with. You know that I haven't had the opportunity to yet. I mean, I got offered a cruise the other day, free cruise around the Mediterranean. Are you taking it? No. What? <laughs> it's adults only. Is it? And I can't Why don't be, you want it? Can't be seven days away from the baby. Unfortunately, oh. she can't come. So I was like, uh-uh. but I also thought, who gives a shit what I do? Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like, I'm not a creator. I'm actually shit at Instagram. Do you know what I mean? I like, know, but why even, am I getting offered that? Even even still, though. You know. <laughs> Danny was like, come on, let's go. It's for oh, two of us. You should have. I know. Can you still take it? Don't think so. I think till the end of September, I could still have one. It was either around the Greek islands or around the Med. So would you, would you go if they let the baby come? Yeah, I would have gone if they let so the why baby they let, go. Because oh, it's, it's, adults, adults it's adults only. Yeah. Oh, right. I know. So maybe like think about some of them. Yeah. Little trips. Because if they're going to invite me, they'll definitely invite you. Because, yeah, no. like, God, I've got like 20,000 followers. No, and I don't never, even bloody engage with them. After no time. one invites me to fuck all, man. You they, need to know yeah, the right people. You, yeah, Jet 2, can you hear this? <laughs> you know, they genuinely don't. Like, you, you know, I mean, like I said, I, I'm sounding really ungrateful. I've worked with nice brands and stuff. Yeah. But no, I mean, I do. I see so many people like going away on, on like these little business trips or you know you see these influencers all the time and they're like yeah so just been sent to Ibiza with you know yeah. P. Louise <laughs> I'm like well, well you've got to does look someone want to even send Antonio to Blackpool at fucking least yeah, yeah exactly send yeah. me somewhere but- yeah Butlins Haven <laughs> yeah, yeah. But- Butlins yeah yeah yeah, I feel like they would be great for you. Um, okay, so... Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> for your character, what I mean. Oh, Not yeah. for you personally. Butlins is a perfect place for you, mate. No, but I think some of your characters would slot right in Then you could do a lot of content about That's it. That's true, yeah. So it would actually work well for them. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I, I don't think Dior are going to come knocking on the door. You never know, Alyssa. Don't... <laughs> yeah. Could do. Unless you're like, yeah, you turn into like this. You do do really like suave... You know, could could go through a total yeah. reinvention. Well, you could do. We're talking about you getting on a health kick, aren't you? Yeah. No, that is true. Yeah. I'm really looking to look well, after myself a genuinely, little bit more. Genuinely, that health brands then will jump on you. Yeah. Genuinely. No. Well, do you know what's really funny? I mean, it's quite offensive. Yeah. But like, I have I've had so many PTs in my DMs. <laughs> <laughs> what are you fucking, trying to say, mate? <laughs> fucking loads. Yeah. They're like, Antonio, we're going to transform you. Yeah. Antonio, I'm going to take you on a ten week program. Blah blah blah. Yeah, but I always think How with dare those things. You? I know. Like, do say stuff like that. You know. <laughs> I know. I always think with those things though, it's like the ones who are not coming knocking, mm. who like don't need to come knocking, that are probably the best ones. Well, the thing that's funny is is that they're obviously like, you know, they're obviously looking at the profile of who mm. they're who they're about to pitch themselves to. So you know what I mean? They're looking at me thinking, okay, oh, you know, let's get get him in the gym. Apologies for interrupting this podcast, but I need to ask a favour. If you're enjoying this podcast so far, then please hit that subscribe button right now. I'll be straight up and honest that I want to see this podcast grow and flourish into something that I'm really proud of. And the only way that I can do that is with your help. So if you've ever learned anything useful from these conversations, then please return the favour by liking, rating, subscribing, and maybe even sharing it with your friends. Thanks very much. Let's get back to the episode. So you've also got... um, a merch line, which yeah. is amazing. Yeah, no, it's fun. When it's, did you start that? We started that in October of last year. Right. And after, you know, I, I really do appreciate the support that's had. I, mm. I really do. I remember that when I initially launched that, I was saying with my business partner, I said, oh, give it, give it about a couple of months just get Christmas out of the way. And I think everyone, everyone would have got this merch and they'll be over it and it'll be a finished thing. And 
nearly a year later, because obviously we're in September now, um, we're, we're having some of the biggest days we've ever had. I just, I don't, I, I can't believe it. It's, it's lovely. It's, I feel very blessed. Have you ever like spotted someone in the street and they've got like one of your jumpers on or a t-shirt on? Or... That's never happened. I, I'll tell you what has. Do you, um, do you know Brandy Carlisle? No. She's like a really famous country singer. She's best friends with Elton John and Joni Mitchell. Oh, wow. And she ordered a personalised video from my store. Oh, my God. Yeah. I was going to get onto that as well. So you do personalised videos. That must be like a, what the fuck? Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. You've gone from working in a broadband call centre to now people are paying you to video yourself saying whatever to yeah. somebody and happy birthday. Yeah. I, well, do you know, it's, it's funny because towards the end of being in the office... I really struggled mm. bad because I was like, my head was not in that office space. Mm. You know, they were like, right, you need to get on the phone to the customer and help them with their internet. It's not working. And I'd be like, just don't care. Yeah, you've checked out. Sorry. Yeah. yeah, yeah, because I just moved on, you know, like, you know, I felt and I'd worked consistently since I was 16, whether it be in retail shops, offices or whatever. And literally within those last couple of months, I did genuinely really struggle with that because, like you said, I'm all of a sudden doing like cameos and birthday mm. messages. And then I've got this manager that's telling me to like jump on the phone. And like, and I know that sounds really like snooty mm. and I don't mean it to be because I know that I was there for a reason. You know, and I, once upon a time, I needed that mm. job. So, do, you know, I can humble myself. But at the same time, you know, people have to appreciate my head wasn't there. And when I was on that phone, oh, it was a menace. Yeah. Oh, it was. I was so bad. They'd be like, so am I going to receive an update about that in like 48 hours? And I'd be like, probably not, no. Or, Why don't you use that as your inspiration? Wouldn't that do be a some great call character? Center ones. Yeah. Yeah. Because we, I, I'll tell you now, one of my biggest like gripes in life i'll tell you now kelly will sit here and back me up bt we didn't we're an <laughs> e-commerce business we didn't have internet for three years because i kept ringing bt i would get that wound up and mad because <laughs> like i was like you haven't sent us the right box you haven't put a phone line and you haven't done it whatever for whatever reason we still didn't have an internet three years later right we're an e-commerce business we run off the internet how stupid is that? And everyone will tell, why can't you? Why can't you? And I'm like, don't even go there. BT, Sky, EE, you name it, we tried it, right? So it wasn't us being ridiculous. Like I can do really hard things in life, but fucking call centers. No, Sorry for swearing. No, no, it's all right. my biggest like, yeah. it triggers me. But I do So now feel Kelly's like had to get the contract out I do. and sort it out because I was like, I'm not ringing them again. No, I'm never I don't blame, no, I, don't, I genuinely don't blame you because <laughs> I, I see it from both sides being somebody that's worked in mm. a call center and somebody that's obviously, you know, um, somebody that's been a customer too. Yeah. But like, it's, there's no like reward for working like in a call center. That that was my, you know, I worked there for nearly three years and it, it was a crock of shit. The, the only thing I liked were the, were the people, yeah. but like there was no rewards. So to a degree, it's it's a tough one because you get the customers ringing up because they're pissed off and you don't give a shit Yeah. because, you, you, you know, why, why should I have this person screaming at me on the phone for like £10 is, an hour? That is me. I mean, one guy at EE went, if you swear again, I'm going to put the phone down. <laughs> no, they do say that. I was, in, do say... I was in Euston Station. He was telling me why the engineer couldn't come out for the fifth time. I was if, like, I am fucking sick of it. Do you know, if I if if they rung up and they were swearing at me, I, it made Should my cut. day. I loved it. like Because normally there's this thing where they're like, right, free warnings and put the phone yeah. down type of thing. And I no, I'd just be revving it up. I'd be like, they'd be like, 45 fucking minutes I've waited to get through to this line. And I'd be like, no way. You know, it's just like, I'm just amping it up. And I thought, you know, I'll be, this is going to be fun. Honestly, it's, honestly, I'm telling you, I mean, my heart rate's gone up. I bet you were my Fitbit just thinking about it. <laughs> because it, that triggers me a lot doing that. Because honestly, and I remember being pregnant and Kelly was like gobsmacked, like gobsmacked at like <laughs> my attitude with this woman because I had lost it completely. But like, lost it because I'd gone round the houses to get this new frigging contract and then she told me at the end of it she was like oh you're not eligible and I was like I have been on the phone for an hour and a quarter now and yeah. now you're telling me that I'm not even eligible for this contract I was like just oh, raging no. I'll tell you what those days when I was pregnant I remember having a meltdown in the bank with these two lads as well <laughs> the, like really? to God 
the uh, there was like a red mist that came over me and I was just like wow I came out of that I was like whoa I was well out of order there yeah. <laughs> but I just couldn't help it it's hormones it gets like that yeah let's not even speak about the HMRC oh no yeah that one's yeah no my, I don't deal with that they account. don't even put the phone no I, well you just can't I just have it all saved to the bank account now and I just get a massive VAT bill I paid it yesterday huge VAT bill and I was like yeah there you go bang yeah that's it P-A-Y-E as well. I never pay that, so they're always chasing me for that. Not because I'm not, because they don't take a direct debit. So then I'm like, oh, fucking hell, no, yeah. I'm no, in arrears, didn't even know. <laughs> Great. Um, yeah, thank you. Yeah, crack on. Um, yeah. But yeah, so it's just one of them. So uh, that would be great inspiration. Call sense. You've call... actually lived and breathed it for three years. So. I have. And, and I've also done retail as well. So definitely probably could do some co- um, You could calls, literally make a set. Call sense dramas for sure. Yeah, because well, I've had some good times in that office. I don't know one person that doesn't get frustrated about call centres. I know, I know. So, yeah, and, and honestly, the call centre I worked in, I won't name it, it was <laughs> it was not normal. Like The, <laughs> the people like, that you meet there. They were like, cr- like problematic crazy like really? yeah, yeah i've never i've honestly i've never seen anything like that it was like a reality issue there'd be people screaming at each other across the room cussing each other storming out um all sorts would be going on you know it was it was a proper circus um kieran christian yeah they're like a couple you- of people couple, couple of, couple of your friends that you still co- chat to a couple of my friends that i still chat to so oh god yeah um, okay, so what's so what's next for you and what's next for... You want to get to a million, is that right, on TikTok? I mean, that would be... I would love that. Yeah. I would. But Does that then bump you up into another, like... So you get paid per view on TikTok, like every per thousand? Per thousand, yeah. Okay. So then do you get a new rate? I don't know. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not too sure. Um, I would say, I mean, it would be lovely to hit a million. Mm-hmm. And that's all anybody kind of speaks to me about sometimes when they speak about my following. They're like, oh, can't wait for you to hit a million and all this. And you'd first off, don't know if it's going to happen. I mean, I know yeah. it's I know it's inevitable, but you still... You're still going to work hard for it. I could do something terrible and to my, like, next, next yeah. week. I'm not then, going to. But Oh, well, yeah, that's something that really doesn't land. They'll really miss like yeah, yeah time or judge so i wouldn't say it's a goal of mine i'm i'm very kind of at the moment like i've obviously i've got an, a really decent audience they're very loyal and they're very kind and they and they really are consistent with their support so if that's all i ever had that would be enough mm. like so if if obviously the community keeps growing then that's brilliant but i'm not that's not really in the back of, in the forefront sorry of, of my mind at the moment i think at the moment, I'm really enjoying filming on location. Okay. And I'm loving doing stuff like this. Yeah. This is really fun for this me. Is, yeah, and this is like the man behind the characters. This is you. This is you talking. This, this is, is not, my yeah. first ever like studio podcast. Amazing. Is it a studio? Is that, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's we what are, it is. That's we are what I've set, just, we are a studio. That's what I just did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, like this is like really a fun. a professional one. Yeah, yeah. I'm, re- I'm really enjoying this. Yeah, instead of like ones that are done over Zoom. Yeah. Which have got really bad sound quality that Calvin probably would shake his head at. Yeah, Calvin would be disgusted. Yeah, yeah. listen to that sound quality. Ugh, that can never gosh, go out. Gosh, like 240p quality. Yeah. Absolutely <laughs> 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 Yeah. Um, but... No, like stuff like this is nice for me. I've never done it before. It's new and I'm experiencing new things. I like filming like I did a, a, a skit at hairdressers. Like I've done, a, you know, do, I've got, so somebody said they want to do a, a, some filming in a Mercedes Benz showroom. Um, things like yeah. that are, are really what I'm looking forward to. Would you ever like want to do anything on TV or would you ever like, you know, want to do it, take it like seriously like that, like almost like acting. What about Panto? Panto off off the cards. Really? That's not, can't happen. Would you not do that? I'm not being in Sleeping Beauty in the, well, no oh my way, God. man. No. I mean, this is probably a really arrogant thing to say, but is Panto not where they all go when it goes to part? <laughs> well, Kelly Bond is, uh, it's like, <laughs> who's my like, <laughs> she's got a part in Panto, but that's <laughs> her dream. <laughs> You know, so, no, she's... if it's your dream, that's brilliant. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it is. 
Yeah. Of course yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> but then, yeah. Of course ex- it is. Exactly. Follow got, your dreams. Exactly. You've got people who absolutely love entertaining and want to be on stage, get that. But yeah, if you try to be a serious actor and then all you're getting is Dick Whittington, you know, yeah. at the Palace Theatre or whatever, <laughs> then you'd be, you know, you, you, you've been rather trained. You'd be a bit gutted. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean. Um, Decent oh. dough, though. Is it? I think so. Is yeah. it? Well, I remember one of my friends who got offered like 50 odd grand. Oh, wow. Yeah. That is quite good. Season. But no, but it is exhausting. Like, I've heard that. I'd, I'd do it for two weeks. It's Go more than that. that, is it not? Like, well, I've three heard. Three weeks, a couple of shows a day. Yeah. Still nah. decent wonga. I do that. <laughs> decent wonga. Mm. No, I, I, I wouldn't. I mean, I have been offered to do a few reality shows before that I've turned down. Like what? Big Brother. Oh, yeah, that'd be. Didn't do that. Don't do that. No. I saw ten years, fifteen years ago, probably. Maybe I mean, obviously, I did Bear Grylls the Island. Maybe you should do something that's like phew, hard. No, you would. I know it'd be difficult, but you'd be good TV because you'd like, you know, be like, be dead. Yeah, no, you wouldn't be dead. But <laughs> no, I promise you. You would be. Couldn't be doing Maybe it. find it challenging. And, oh yeah. But then, if you could actually stick it out and do it, imagine what you would learn about yourself doing it. You'd True. be more resilient. I know, but I'm... Do you know, let me tell you this, a mi- big misconception about me is people think I'm quite a confident person. Right. Be- because they see my videos and they think I'm dead eccentric and I'm dead funny. I'm very nervous. Like, I was e- I was even really nervous. I bet people will pick up at the beginning of this that yeah. I was nervous. Yeah. I'm a very nervous person. So yeah, sometimes it takes a while for people to warm up into a podcast. Or, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So things like that would be... I mean, you wouldn't catch me in like a box full of snakes on I'm a no. Celebrity. No chance. If you could do one reality no. show is the one. I think Traitors would be quite good. Even though I've never watched it, but I believe it's very good. I've not seen that. The Traitors. I've never seen it, but apparently it's a smash hit. Like it was a smash hit. Do you know what I think I might, I'd love to do? It's but basically think... about lying to everyone. You want to like, like I, I don't know, Calvin, do you know what it is? Uh, I've never seen it. No. I right. don't want to be caught out and... Cordelia, do you know what it is? Yeah, it's like uh, people people lying to each other to try and to try and win money. Yeah, pretty much. But it could be really like deep backstabbing and manipulation. Yeah, apparently it's a, it's a, it was a smash hit, and like every producer that I know, because I speak to a few TV producers, and they always say like, "What are you looking for?" Because I always have good characters to like put people forward to shows and stuff. So they always come to me and ask me. And they were like, format shows, you know, because I'm always trying to come up with game shows as well. Format shows do really well. Ones that you could sell around the world. That's yeah. you, you set for life. Yeah. Pretty much. I think I've always, I think the job's actually taken now, but I actually said I, um, I would have loved to have done The Weakest Link. Oh, yeah. You know, like do, being the yeah. present that would have been fun. Yeah. Who is that? Uh, but it was Anne Robinson. But yeah, who is it now? Not, it's um, Ranganathan. Can't remember his name. Yeah. Ramesh. Ramesh, that's it. Yeah. yeah. I feel like I'd have, I don't know. I feel like I could have done a good job at that. But I think the reason I would have liked it is because in the original one, Anne had such a foul mouth, didn't she? Yeah, that's true. But she, I don't think she that'd was be cutting, wasn't she? Not allowed now. Well, Antonio, thank you so much for coming in today. No, it's my pleasure. Thank you for it's having me. It's been so interesting to listen to a side of life that I never really like kind of listen to, especially not on the podcast and like never really to get to get in depth in a conversation. Usually we're talking about uh-huh. hormones and, you know, whatever. Yeah. But it's um, it's been dead interesting to listen to. Yeah. Well, you have to get me on again sometime. I'll talk to you about what it's like living in Salford. <laughs> I know. Well, I can't wait to see what's to come. And thank you so much. No, my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.